friend O, Steve here. And Larson. Steve here. No, God, no. He says and Larson. Say and Larson, and then Larson says and Steve. Larson. Here. I'll say and Larson, and then we've done a loop, and you'll know when to You've go. Already try You've already ruined. it. You've already ruined. Try again. Try again. No, it'll be you fine. Know, that, it'll be good. It'll be good. Even even seven six years ago, that was that, the intro was a problem. You know, it was always a problem. <laughs> All right, here. Let's you just never try. gave me one. I'm just gonna Who's do it this last this? time. Okay. Hey, friend, no, Steve here. And Larson. Steve here. And Larson. I'm not Ann Larson. I'm not going to say Ann Larson. It doesn't You're make it. Ann Larson and Steve. And then if we go through all of them and then it's good. You know, my favorite one, can... my favorite one, Dan, was when he said, Ann Pucci. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why, I don't me. know why that sticks out to me, but I remember when he said, Ann Pucci. I am I the Pucci of this group. So Dan, we have some, we have some, uh, some talking to do about a recent appearance you made on uh, straight to hell. Number one, how did that happen? What did they, they know who you are? Are you're I mean, super the, famous in the UK, aren't you? The forbidden door is wide open in the wrestling podcast. Oh, world. listen to and you talking current terminology. I know. I know, right? I even know what a face, a face and a heel are. I know. <laughs> at at, la at, at so last, much. it's only been seven years. <laughs> as soon as I left, as soon as <laughs> I left, the warm bosom of going in raw. I even realized raw was crap. Like that was an amazing thing to finally know yeah uh that's sorry, number, about, sorry about that <laughs> number one on the list is you saddled us with a name that is now synonymous with the, like the worst in wrestling like literally when we decided to stop oh, yeah, there's that there's the innuendo of it as well <laughs> yeah there's also oh, we like this... the innuendo you know that's a oh, good yeah. i guess yeah it's yeah. not like it's not like we called you know it, we didn't call the show like full penetration wrestling like I probably FP, would have, FPW. yeah, FP, I'd watch yeah. It. There you go. I probably would have put my. I probably would have jumped at it if he had said, "Oh, we should call it full penetration wrestling." I, I I'd like when I said going in raw, and you were like, "I and that's was very how it I didn't realize that it was going to be my career. Had I <laughs> had I given any thought to like, oh, I'm going to do, do this think, for a little. Sorry, sorry. Do you think I'd still be nerd cubed if I thought ten years later I'd still be fucking saddled with that? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good. Yeah, have you have you, have you ever considered? Point. Have you ever thought about like the nightmare of dropping that as a brand? Like I, no. I then I'd have to change the, the things on my belt. I mean, that is the old logo, but it's that's the lone reason. <laughs> because and then... you'd have to change the side place. Side I, place I, I don't use expensive. it for projects outside of YouTube, though. I don't use it. Right, I use it for streaming and videos. When like you did, book, when book, you my, did the my movie, book. yeah, just, my, my book. Look, it's just, just my name. name. I'm not gonna show the whole thing. I don't know how you are for. I've got to wait a few seconds into the video before I can get my usual language going. When we used to do, <laughs> when we used to do this, were you? You used to be you used to your name used to be uh, protected, wasn't it? In what way? You like, you saved your name, your last name. Like you didn't, you didn't want your last name getting out there. That's I what you're asking. Right, Steve. No, no, not my last name. No, my last name was was fine. It's where I live. That's the secret. Oh, okay. Oh, What's behind this right. window that I put a whiteboard over? That's the secret. I thought, oh. I for some reason, I thought when we were doing a session on, like, I don't know what. I don't even know what we used to use to get together. And, like, your name Skype. was in view. It was, yeah, Skype. it was Skype. Oh, was it Skype? It was oh, Skype. because you know what? Because Skype. you didn't want your Skype handle getting out there. Because then, like, yeah. your millions of subscribers to... would be like, oh, hello, Dan. You used to get really bombarded if your Skype handle got out there. Back in the day, back when we had to turn our computers on, remember the crank to turn the computers on with? You had to wind yeah, the crank up. Yeah, mm -hmm. we used to. Yeah, we used to. For we days. used to do ten for the win with a rotary phone, where we'd go. We did. Eh, 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 eh. So, <laughs> yep. uh, Dan, yep. how are you doing? Or... All the operator, all that. <laughs> I'm doing alright. I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm. I'm sort of. Um, uh, I'm a wrestling fan again. It's been a while. I'm kind of getting back into it proper. I watch I watch wrestling every week now. But it's just every it's just week. dynamite, right? And sometimes it's a bit of rampage, yeah. <laughs> but nothing else. <laughs> but no no WWE. No, I haven't seen it. I'll tell you the exact moment I stopped watching WWE. Ooh, can we guess? It was Can we guess? Have a guess. Have a guess. When I went, you know what? Fuck it. I'm done. Um can okay, can can we nail can you give us a hint like a year? What's the year? Uh, 2019. Ooh, was it was it uh, Hell in a Cell, Seth versus the Fiend? No, I I was the one who was like that was dumb and I enjoyed it because this is dumb. Oh wow, you're on the same page of us. Um, um, yeah. after that, then. <laughs> I think we talked about it afterwards. 2019. Oh, was it Kofi it Brock? It was Kofi Brock. Okay, okay, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Kofi Brock, I went. Okay. 
I think a lot okay, of people, <laughs> just a lot of people dropped out. Like anecdotally, like yeah. we had so many people. It's funny because that was a weird stretch where like uh, Seth Fiend was a lot of people anecdotally were like, we're done. Like we're canceling. Yeah, mm-hmm. It used to be we're canceling the network. Now, I mean, I guess you can do that in the UK, but like over here, it's like. I'm just not going to watch gonna anymore. Peacock. Yeah, nobody actually said I'm going to cancel Peacock because how are they going to watch if the they Office? Got Xfinity, you get it for free. You really can't cancel it. You know. Yeah, it's like too complicated. Office is still on Netflix here. We got we got it on Netflix and it's on Amazon Prime and I got the DVDs. I'm watching Office on three screens right now. All the different things. And if you want to get that here in the states, ExpressVPN.com slash what was it? Gir. Be moving on to. <laughs> That's the worst ad copy read I've ever. <laughs> we have like two. We have like two different promo codes. We always, it's either slash raw or <laughs> slash gir, and I can never remember like which one it is. Give me a moment. I think it's. I think it's gir. Oh, there we go. I think you're right. This, I think it is. This was ne- when I was a thing. This was never a thing where Correct, you were GIR. like professional. Oh, I no know. Damn, we're doing we're so like, well. <laughs> you're doing like you're, you're doing better than I am, I think. Like, you know, like, I'm like, oh, I don't I'm know. On Twitch, dude. you have a huge audience on Twitch. Usually, like over a thousand. We only do that if we're like, I don't know. No, doing no, I don't triple mania. Or something I get like about that. between three and five hundred. That's what I like to get. Really, I've seen a lot more. Oh yeah, some, if I'm doing like E3 or something, you get like five k. Oh, maybe but, that's know. what it was. Okay, All right. it's because we're the only people who watch E3 and don't hate on literally every single thing that appears. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, look, quite good. People are like. Someone likes games. <laughs> it's fine. It's nice. Um, how yeah. was the gaming? So, like, we all met because of the gaming mm-hmm. stuff. We were originally uh, going to do uh, 10 for the win because you used to do. Do you still do GTA uh, Machinima? Sorry, sorry. We did do that 10 for the win. Yeah, we were going to, and then we did, is what I was. It was what I get. <laughs> we did do that 10 for the win. No, we didn't because it's not on the internet. You can't find it anymore, Dan. We have it buried away in one oh, of our yeah. files. I got. I've got. I, got I uploaded the. Um, Every machinima I ever made for machinima in one big long video with like bits separating wow. it off. Wow. How long and is that? There is no video I own that's been copyright struck more than that one. It is every day. <laughs> it gets bombed. It's the worst thing. And bits of it, I think, are muted. It's just Why? brutal. And I'm like, Did you use a bunch of like copyrighted music in it? Just game tracks. But some game tracks for oh, doing the stuff I was doing. Oh. Machinima, like, yeah, that's fine. And now I've not I've not got an affiliate or whatever the fuck it is. I don't care. Um, I don't. I don't have ads on my channel anymore. I'm just Patreon. I don't. Mm. I'm just like now. What is your Patreon so yeah, people know? We'll put it in the description. But probably slash no cube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I stopped, like I stopped promo caring. Case. I want to point out, like <laughs> that Kofi Brock match made me stop caring about every Everything, single thing yeah. about my life. Like Wasn't that was just wrestling. <laughs> except this dog. This dog's the only thing. Oh, it's left. What's me. your dog's name? It's gone. <laughs> yeah, she's like, just comes now in it's me. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the feed shows Five up and Lilith. takes your dog away. Run. Oh, dear. <laughs> Fetch. <laughs> <laughs> it just throws it at a child in the crowd. Yeah. Um, so let's talk uh, about your appearance on Cultaholic. How did they find you? Like, they they just knew, like, that you... I think they sent a met. I think I got a Twitter DM. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on the twitter which again i don't use at all i said matt runs my twitter dm did they know <laughs> in advance I, I, that you that you uh, co-founded going in wrong i think they did yeah they must have done i hope so maybe we told maybe, maybe i think maybe we told ross when we did it yeah i think so yeah. we probably told them the origin you've both done yeah. it yeah i watched both of yours in prep yeah whenever we talk whenever whenever i talk to anybody from your side of the proverbial pond i'm always like hey i'm one of you because i lived there for four years when i was a kid <laughs> <laughs> and then Ross I did that when I'm in Finland. I was like, two years, two years. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We're same. We're the same now. Yeah. Aerobar, <laughs> Aerobar, uh, East Enders. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Top of the Pops. Yeah, I know all that stuff. Stock Aikman Waterman. Stuff. I know what that is. <laughs> the Queen. You, uh, the Queen. Yeah. The, the royal queen. family. <laughs> Princess Pack. Diana. Pa- yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, William, <laughs> William Regal. Boris? I've seen him wrestle. Yeah. So Re- Willie Regal wrestle. Yeah. Do you like Boris or no? Live. Do you like Boris or no? Let's get into politics. <laughs> do, do I like Boris? Do I like Boris, who today. Oh, if, no. if you want to go politics. Oh, no, no. Do you want no, to no. go, no. go politics? Today said he wouldn't try to make misogyny a crime because police would be too overwhelmed. That's. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to. This mic isn't real. I don't know why I'm pretending to talk to it. Do I like? <laughs> do I like? 
No. No. Yeah, I know you don't. No, no. It's weird because I'll be yeah. Um No. Uh, because, so yeah. Oh, I'll ask you a question. Yeah. Trump. What do you think? No, he's terrible. Oh, We've yeah. lost. Worse. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's it's no. It's he's worse. he's worse than Boris. Worse. By the way, you guys have it easy with him. Anyway. Oh yeah. No, I'm very aware. Okay. He was okay. Literally a cartoon character okay. come to life. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Um. So <laughs> you had said on on Straight to Hell that. Oh, shit, you were you surprised. It. Oh, no, yeah, of course I want. Listen, <laughs> anytime anybody's going to maybe mention me, I will watch. I'll tell you what, though. Anytime I hear that WWE's done something fucky, I'm always like, I'm going to watch some live reactions from Steven Larson. Because <laughs> I love watching you. And the other guy. I don't know this other guy is. This enforcer fella. I don't care. He's not one of He's the original three. He's a good guy. Three. He's a good He's guy. Not the three. Great. I don't give a shit. He's the Poochie of the group now. That's why I can't make that joke anymore. Oh. He is the Poochie of the group. No way, man. It's Itchy and Scratchy and Dan. And yeah. then it was... <laughs> there was no Dan in that. Um, <laughs> so you, when you said, you said, yeah, I threw out the term going in raw as a joke. And then he bit on yeah. it. I didn't realize yeah, that. I thought exactly you were being right. serious about like, hey, this would be a solid name for a I, podcast. I, I want to point out, right? I'm shit at titles. Yeah. And I think you should know this now. I mean, hang on. Let me once again show. I'll just do it. I'll hold it like that. Uh, the... <laughs> I called a book this. Yeah, it does it actually. Wait, it's, they don't. They don't bleep it out on the cover there. Show, show the whole. Do cover. you want to see? Yeah, show the whole cover. Uh, have you not got copy? Huh? Have you not got oh, copy? No, we don't. We live in America. We can't. We don't have access to books here. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Trump they banned they them. banned them. Bam! <laughs> oh wow! So yeah. that's on like store shelf. Yeah, over there in England, they like yeah. they can't. You guys care about different things than I us. I did a book tour. And th there was just this on display outside of like, mm -hmm. in, I think it was in Manchester, just a big display with like a big, like, oh, fuck wow. yeah, video game side today. And this old lady like went up to really slowly, hunched over, picked up the book, looked at it and pissed herself laughing. It was the best thing oh, I've ever that's seen in my great. Oh, that's great. There'd be protests Wonderful here if there was a book yeah. called that. You guys have a stick up your ass about things that are way different than the things we have a stick up our ass about. Yeah. If you put milk or tea in, in the wrong way, you're lynched. But yeah. you can say fuck in the front cover of a book. It doesn't. It, all it does is it means that Amazon don't list it. Yeah. Uh, in when you search for it. <laughs> yeah, I was apparently quite a bad thing when trying to sell a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I was there, wait. So wait, did they do a different printing for like the United States, like with the, with the cover? No, I don't blue? think. No, I no? think we got the same. No, I think you just. This is the paperback. I think the US just got the paperback. Okay. That's it's a good cool. book. I recommend it. So does. Um, the Daily Telegraph, who I slag off in the book, and then they actually write a really nice quote for it. So, oh wow, oh, wow. Do you think that means wow. they didn't read it? Oh yeah, it's a book. It's Daily Telegraph. I don't. Okay. I don't. <laughs> well, I don't know. You got so many rags over there that people hate. Yeah, there's so many different papers. Yeah, all people. of them. I, I think that just just assume everybody hates all of them. Like the Sun, people hate that. It's literally banned in parts of the country. If you buy uh, it, you what? will literally be attacked. Wow. <laughs> wow. What about the Daily Mail? That's pretty bad too, right? That's yeah. That's the Trump level. Like mm. that's just nonsense. The and Guardian. Just... What's the Guardian like? Left wing, but because it's British, quite transphobic. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um. So, uh, you've been watching uh, AEW since its, AEW. since its inception, or did something specifically? Episode one. Oh, I wow. was there for that okay. pay-per-view. I wanted to watch some wrestling. I went, let's try this thing. Let's try. I've seen I've seen the story of this going from like a Twitter bet and, you know, scaling up to actually being a show. Let's watch this show. And in that show, I went, I like that. That felt different. I couldn't put my finger on it, but it felt different. Yeah, it's one so of those. was that double yeah. or nothing? That was, yeah, I think that was the first one. When Moxley turns up at the end. Yeah, double or nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah double or nothing. We that one. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we were. That. Yeah, it it's a great show. It's funny. So, uh. AEW does have that thing. I don't know if you've ever have you ever watched any old WCW shows from like back in the day? Yeah, you made me watch a few. Oh yeah, are, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we used to do, we used to do uh, old pay per views on the mm -hmm. show. We used to have to watch. Well, that's those. what the oh, phrase "going in raw" was about because I'd never seen them. Had yeah. I? Yeah, and I forgot we did. Um, uh, it was our book of the month club, but what do we call it? Book of the match. Book of the match. That's right. Yeah. I didn't name that one, and you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have an innuendo or. <laughs> yeah, that's what the 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 comparison that AEW gets both fairly and unfairly. Like it's funny because because some people use WCW as like slander and some people use it as like a compliment. They're like, oh, it's like WCW, yeah. and I'm like, well, yeah, WCW had like a lot of really good years where they had yeah. like arguably its best years like '96, '97 when they had like the NWO going, but then they also like featured some of the best like they brought in all these amazing cruiserweights like uh. Uh, from from like luchadors uh, and then like from uh, from Japan, 
And so they had like just a ton of like great wrestling. Uh, and then they had like all these huge like mainstream stars. So it was like this really great mix. And it wasn't until like a little bit later that you realized, oh, those mainstream stars like Hulk Hogan, they were never going to let anybody in the undercard like yeah. go up over them. And so that became like the real problem. But like when you look at those like really great years when you have guys even like Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho coming up, it's like, yeah, AEW can actually claim to and they have like good stories and stuff. They can claim to be kind of a WCW 2.0, but in my opinion, it's kind of in a good way. A lot of people like to reference it yeah. as like a later days WCW when it was like really bad. WCW is very much associated with failure. They were they yeah, lost. Right. They were yeah, absorbed. Yeah, they were yeah, yeah, but yeah. they were competition for a hell of a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, you know, one in the ratings. Yeah. 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 They make. They had to make. They forced WWE to make massive changes. And it's interesting mm -hmm. watching AEW versus WWE because WWE aren't budging. They're just yeah. sitting. They're just doing the same stuff. They they don't seem to care. They're, Apart from they killed yeah. they killed NXT as far as I can tell. They're sort of <laughs> oh, wow. Have you seen Have you <laughs> seen is... any of 2.0? I've seen the logo and that was enough for me. It's um, that it's, was... it's a sea change. It's an absolute sea change. It's completely <laughs> different. You can see like it's like they the, they moved the show to a high school auditorium because you could see everything because the space is so bright. You can oh, see the okay. ceiling and the walls where there's not stuff plastered all over it. You know. And and it's all bright and it's colorful and the wrestling's not as good as it used to be, and uh, it's it's just completely different. It's, like the matches are all short; like you rarely get a yeah. match longer than ten minutes. Because they've gone went back to developmental and stuff. Well, the, dude, so. half half the people that they're trotting out, and grant, mind you, they have a forty million dollar a year TV deal with USA uh, for two hours of live TV. So like half the probably more than half like the people that they've just introduced because this was like a band-aid they like went from what nxt was and then like in one week everything was different and they called up like 15 of their signees from this february and th these are people who have no prior wrestling experience on the independent ranks so it's like they brought in athletes like <clears throat> amateur wrestlers mma guys uh, uh, like gymnastics people, stuff sort. Scott Steiner's <laughs> nephew. Scott Steiner's <laughs> nephew, <laughs> um, and they just brought him in, slapped a bunch of names on him, gave him a bunch of weird, silly gimmicks, um, and 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 th there was no explanation for it on TV. They just they just yeah. all of a sudden it was like a brand new thing where like some of the originals were still there, and then they it just all of a sudden they're like, hey, there's here's a guy named Braun Breaker. And he's like Scott Steiner's nephew. And he talks like Scott Steiner and he kind of looks like his dad, Rick Steiner. But his name is Braun Breaker. And uh, and this is like they're, they're just developing. They're, they're going all in. They basically seeded the independent wrestler sort of grab to AEW because mm -hmm. AEW just does it so much better. And yeah. uh, and then but it's like everybody they brought in from February like you. You can't, you cannot expect anybody to come in from like eight months ago fresh and be able to put on compelling cable TV matches. That yeah. that can, I don't care who you are. Like, I don't even know if Kurt Angle really was doing that. I mean, he might have been. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's it's a, it's it's shocking what they did. Yeah, uh, I, honestly, I didn't get past the logo. Like, that was the because NXT NXT for me felt like it was. Um, it was it was developmental, but it, they, the way they'd structured it felt like it was a bit more underground, and these people were getting up and learning their skills through more like an underground, almost cage fighty mm -hmm. sort of. Mm -hmm. It's dimly mm -hmm. lit, it's darker, it's dingier, it's a bit more. So you get there, and then you get to the big leagues, and yeah. it's sort of that. It's got that more movie feel to it. I always thought, <laughs> and then that, I see that logo, I'm like, well, how the fuck does that tie into the? Oh, it was it was crazy uh -oh. because we figured like. They had mentioned like the, the 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 president of the company who's kind of new there. He's been there like a year, a year and change. He was like, "Yeah, NXT is going to have a rebrand in the next couple of weeks, um, like aesthetically." And it's like, "Okay, well, we also knew they were bringing in some new people, mm -hmm. but we figured it would be sort of a gradual transition, just bringing these people in." It's like, "Okay, when they bring new people in, it just won't be from the independent ranks. It'll be people who have been in developmental for a little while and who really sort of have 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 taken to it." And instead, they just got like the you know the everybody they signed in February, and they were just like here now that they're on TV. you're on TV now, yeah. you're on TV with what six months of of professional wrestling training. Yeah, 
in yeah. some cases. I mean, I mean, they're all you know athletic. They're all athletes. Yeah, it's not like so Steve and Larson are going out there. <laughs> over feet, only no headlocks and like chin locks and arm bars. It's but not it's, all rest holds. But the matches are down to like three to five minutes a piece. And they're always like carving because like you can learn. I feel like in eight months you can learn like one match. Like you can yeah. learn. Okay. This is how you do the one match. Right. And so like, we've noticed like there's this tag team called like the Creed brothers, Julius and, uh, and Brutus and Brutus. Yeah. So you know how that's going to go. <laughs> um, and so, and so I like what Brutus Creed looks like. Yeah. And so the first week they had, they had a match. It's like, Oh, it's a pretty good match. And then the second week, it, they had another match. It was like, that was the same match they just had. And then you yeah, see, like, they, a, they, they added a move, maybe. A move they talked yeah, about. Yeah. But same sequence, same storytelling. It's like the same three minutes. It's like, so now we're just watching repetition happen. I mean, when when they first did the, tra- the, 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 the switch, I told Steve, like, you know, maybe the worst case scenario is we get a, two hours of watching people learn how to wrestle on cable television, yeah. you know? Yeah. It kind of seems like that's what it's going to be. Be for the most part. <laughs> There's, I, it was actually pretty surprising that not more NXT people got drafted during the draft. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we just had a draft. Yeah, yeah, they, they had so one. Yeah, night, two night, night two was last night. Yeah. Did they did they fix the biggest problem of separating the new new, new day? I heard they separate the new day off the last draft. They did it again. Yeah, yeah oh, good. They they did it again. They 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 were good. back together for Big E winning the title, which was great. Oh yeah, no, I saw Big E won the title. Yeah. And then they they Is separated it? them again. I left because one of the New Day had the title. Like that's well, lost the title. Yeah, yeah. Well, one one of the yeah. New Day now has a title, so you can come back to it, Dan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can I? Because I saw Finn. I saw. What oh, they did to oh Finn. man! Tell us about I saw, that. Yeah, I saw what they did to the demon. I only seen the clip at the end of the match. That's all you need I to saw, see. That's all you need to see. I saw. I, saw, I mean, I, it's a, a consistent thing that I've never really liked Roman Reigns, and they because he's an asshole and he's like, I'm the best. He's, He's he's Superman. He's got no faults. He's got no flaws. And making him a good guy, you can't root for somebody with no faults or flaws. You don't ever root for that guy. So yeah. making him a bad guy was the right thing to do. Um, mm-hmm. But they've just made him perfect as a bad guy, and, and it's just boring. It's just such a fucking boring character. It's always been a boring character, and so it's it really is what really pushed me out of it. it was oh, what's WrestleMania going to be? I wonder who Roman's going to face for the belt that he either is holding or will get that night. Um, it's hard to care about a story. It's they always say, "Oh, it's not the it's not the ending; it's the journey." Mm-hmm. Journey's fucking dull as well. Let's be honest. The journey's the same thing. But that, that Finn, the ending to that Finn thing. Did they ever classify why no. the ropes no. just broke? No, no, they didn't go back to anything. I'd smack down about. We, it. No. we okay. figured they might, but they completely just dropped it. And now Finn's been drafted to Raw, so it extra doesn't it extra doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just dumb. Yeah, it's like it's a certainty now. They'll never address it. No, it's never. Yeah, they're never going to address it. Um, they didn't. You know, the commentary in the moment. You know, started rampantly speculating in the moment, just trying to improv and say, "Oh, maybe it was divine intervention." And so, like, we half thought, were they fed that line? Are they going to do like a Roman versus God thing? Um, <laughs> actually, God, just bring down that. Yeah, God again. yeah, they did it before. Even spot the spotlight. Even, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even Roman was like, you know, like acknowledging that it was some sort of, you know, uh, divine intervention. Mm-hmm. And last night, I don't know if you noticed this, Steve, and it could be nothing. Is is when they announced the Usos have been drafted to SmackDown, they do that shot of the Usos standing there in the background. There's Heyman. Yeah, and Heyman. You know, he was like sweating, getting his sense of relief, and he looks up. Yeah, towards the heavens, and it's probably nothing. I think Heyman's desperately trying to rewrite something. If, if he's like, if I do that, they'll care. If I do that, it will seem like something's happening. Yeah, I don't know. He just, I mean, it's sort of, I think he just did sort of a hammy acting job because he was like, <sighs> like <laughs> that. He kind of looked up like that. And, yeah. yeah. And they were like, well, I mean, you've got a character called know, the but... Demon. If you're going to debut somebody whose alter ego is an angel, I suppose, first person from the Yeah, that's what we thought too. Mm-hmm, yeah. Brings but, on up from NXT as some sort of a uh, uh, divine type character. Braun yeah. Breaker. Braun Breaker is a yeah. The Deacon. Did they, the Deacon Braun did Breaker. They call Demon, him, Demon. Did they the call Demon him Braun Breaker so they could get a BB so they could try and replace the Adam Cole baby kind of chant? Oh, that's a leap, but it's not a terrible one. I mean, that's the thing. Like, it, I always feel like the way I think about WWE is how you would think about some sort of horrific, toxic relationship you were in, yeah. where they've lost the benefit of the doubt, and you're like, are they doing this to fuck with me? 
Because that Finn stuff, you got to... Because I, I watched that. I'm so far away from it now that I watched that and I just went, I really feel sorry for Stephen Larson at this exact moment. It was... I, uh, I, yeah. Yes, they do. I mean, they, they have a history of doing stuff for... And it's... Petty. They have like a yeah. catch-all. It's for heat. It's like, hey, you like this person? He's in his hometown wrestling. We're going to have him lose and be yeah. humiliated. It gets good heat. But the problem is they never, like, pay it off. They never, like, oh, we're going to have I, Lana, uh, uh, Rusev's uh, wife. Uh, well, you know who, who Lana is. You know who Lana Ru- is. Miro. Rusev? Miro. 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 I don't know. Yeah, Miro. Well, we're, we're, we're in the WWE <laughs> universe we're talking right now. Um, they did this thing with Lana for, like, nine weeks. She kept on being put through a table. And it was, like, obviously one of those things where they just sort of thought it was funny backstage. But she gave an interview after she left the company and was like, yeah, that was going to have a payoff at Survivor Series. I was going to go in there and get like my, you know, my my revenge or whatever. And uh, and instead they just turned into a big gag where she was like frozen out of the match. And it's either because somebody thought it was funny backstage uh, or or what have you. But like it was just one of those things where it's like if I'm a viewer and I'm invested in this happening and I want to see this character reach a natural arc of the the simplest story arc <laughs> of bad thing uh, happened to her then she gets to have her revenge she gets her moment to shine mm-hmm. they don't do that like nope. so like WWE has they have cool moments from time to time they really do they because they they have got such a deep roster with talented people and sometimes they nail it they really do sometimes but so often they do stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so often, so right. often they they drop the ball because of some weird Vincism. And it's 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 mm-hmm, kind of yeah. infuriating to watch as a viewer. Well also they they prioritize moments over telling stories. Mm-hmm. They'll do things to get the moment and and yeah. completely neglect the story the either that should yeah. it's, um, or that Zach, that should Zach follow. Snyder. Zach Snyder storytelling. You want the moment, mm-hmm. the, no, none of the connective tissue. You work that out later. You want yeah. moment, moment, moments that people remember yeah. and screenshots. And, and it's it's how they operate, like their their business model in terms of ratings too. It's like, oh, you know, uh, we've our, our ratings are down. Let's do a shake up. Let's just openly yeah. acknowledge that things are bad. So we're gonna shake it up, and we're gonna give you the audience the idea that we're working on things when they really just they just sort of don't. Oh, uh, they're just kind of reshuffling the deck and then it's yeah. not really addressing anything else. Or yeah. they bring in legends. It's legends night. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, pandemic. How is Goldberg doing? Is he still Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. Uh, is he still wrestling? Yeah, dude. He's got he's got a match in 3 3 weeks. 2 weeks against Bobby Lashley. Guess what? Goldberg is Goldberg's going to win this. He keeps on talking about wanting to kill Bobby Lashley. Get this. So this is what happened. So Goldberg brings his son if he's just really racist, that, just old racist. Dude, honestly, that's some, a, that's a gimmick. some of the way he talks, it's like he's never said this about anybody else. And the idea is, <laughs> the idea is, uh, Lashley. Uh, I'm sorry, Goldberg brought his son to SummerSlam, and when his Lashley, son about, I'm assuming 40, 50 years old. He <laughs> he's like 15, <laughs> I think he's like fifteen or so. I think he's fifteen. I think he's fifteen. Yeah, I think he's fifteen. Okay. So he hopped the barricade because at the like Goldberg. <laughs> They booked this match so that Goldberg blew out his knee. That was part of the story. But like here at home, we're like, he's 55. He's done worse. He's just blown out his knee. Yeah, like, just, it, it's he, entirely possible. It's not storyline. You know? And he, he did a pretty good job knee. selling it. Like he looked, I was like, oh my God, he looks like a damaged animal on the road. And uh, and so they had to stop the match. And I think like Bobby Damn Lashley. On the road. Sorry, the, the imagery of just. He looked like he just had a tie him up through chest. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And he's like crawling, doesn't know his <laughs> legs off. Um, and so like his son hops the barricade because Bobby Lashley and MVP, I think, start putting the boots to him. And uh, and he comes from the kid comes from behind Lashley, and Lashley grabs the kid and puts him in a hurt lock. Now, I always go back to like you can you can YouTube search any uh, any time like in WWF or WCW when a fan has hopped the barricade. They drop character and beat the shit out of these people. I think because they just understand, hey, this person has given me the license to beat the crap out of them because they've done this. And so Lashley's assertion is he jumped me from behind. He jumped the barricade, jumped me from behind. I thought it was a normal fan, so I put him in the hurt lock. And Goldberg's like, oh, you're lying, Bobby Lashley. It's like, 
Well, no, that happens in wrestling. Whenever somebody jumps a barricade, they beat the shit out of them. This is a perfectly mm-hmm. valid reason. And so Goldberg's like, oh, yeah, I want to protect my son at any cost. And I'm going to kill you, Bobby Lashley. It's it's honestly, it's just, it's like kind of ugly. And on top of that, because he's so old, it's like extra Clint Eastwoody <laughs> and just like, yeah, get off my lawn kind of stuff. And it's like, it sucks because he's going to fucking win in Saudi Arabia. Oh, it's a Sa- oh, it's, it's a Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Arabia show because the only way, the only way Goldberg well, shows up if it's WrestleMania or Saudi Arabia because they're massive paydays. Yeah, and which honestly you the, can't fault the guy for that. No, I mean you can fault the people who are booking him for that and how. I mean, again, uh, compare him to how Sting's being treated over in AEW. Sting, who is older, on par. Is, isn't he? How old is Sting? I think Sting's. 50... I think Sting's is early sixty. Is he sixty-two? I, I want to say sixty-two. 62. Yeah, sixty-two seems right. And Goldberg, Goldberg is 55. fifty-four. Oh, fifty-four. Okay. Goldberg's only fifty-four. Yeah. <laughs> You're sixty-two. Yeah, sixty-two. Wow. So it's almost an eight-year difference with Sting. Mm-hmm. And how mm-hmm. good? How good does Sting look at? He looks amazing. In AW, he looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And he's prote- and he's pushing Darby to the goddamn moon. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, well, yeah. So, so let's AEW. talk about that. Let's talk about good stuff. So, what do you like? What like? What's your thing in AEW right now? Uh, basically everything but the women's stuff, which just they just need to put more focus on. Yeah, so I think the the biggest flaw at the moment is they're just not. I yeah, I really like how everything is factioned up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. It, huh? it feels like they've kind of gone into. It's really naturally gone that way. And I feel like if somebody's not in an episode, I don't really notice. Mm-hmm, yeah. Because there's always a low, there's a lot of big stories going on, but they're juggling it really nicely at the mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. Um, I'm. It's. I mean, I watch it on Fight TV, so I don't, I don't even get adverts. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing. It's mm-hmm. like three pound fifty a month. That's great. Yeah. It's glorious. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and I really, I just, I enjoy just how much of it is wrestling. Because mm-hmm. that's what that's why I started. I mean, I started Undertaker CM Punk. That was the first match that I ever went. Because the first thing, I was like, oh, this is kind of some stuff happening. I think it was WrestleMania 29. Because I was I was going to go see the live show. Mm-hmm. And I'd never seen it before. And I was like, yeah, let's go see a live show. But I'll, I'll watch the most recent thing. It was WrestleMania, Undertaker versus CM Punk. And I loved the wrestling in that match. And I was like, that. I like that. That's a thing that I like. In fact, if I'm rightly lost, and you put on every Undertaker match after WrestleMania 28 in Straight to Hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably because uh, yeah. end of an era is such a great match. It's such a nice little wrap up to his career. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, but for me, it was the start of a new era. Oh, the punk punk match is good. Yeah. yeah, it's a good match. Yeah, punk. So that was when I went. Ah, oh, that's a cool thing. And then I went. I saw the live show. I saw William Regal lose. Uh, I saw. The... <laughs> that's a big difference in AEW when like they bring out the hometown hero. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you get the. I wing. mean, punk yeah. punk leaping into that crowd was the best thing. That was, was amazing. Such a that was that was great stuff. Such a beautiful thing. But yeah, so I went I went from there and I fell in love with the wrestling part because I saw the first thing I saw was a pay per view, and then I saw mm. a live show which was different, but it was live and I kind of expected it to be different. I never really got on with the TV stuff because it was it just a long a lot of it and it yeah. was long and meandering and it yeah. didn't really sort of go anywhere. Um, and then with now with so as I fell off because I was only watching remember even when I was watching it with you it was only the pay-per-views I was watching I just catch up briefly before it and then just watch the pay-per-views but now I'm hitting Dynamite every week because mm-hmm. it's worth watching because there's a lot of professional wrestling as CM Punk keeps repeating because he's right and that is why I'm there I'm there for the same reason Punk's there yeah and I'm especially there now because fucking CM Punk is there man isn't it crazy that's like how I started CM Punk and Daniel Bryan so I've got my the guy who got me into wrestling and my favorite wrestler yeah within mm-hmm. a few days of each other that pay per view was nuts. A couple of weeks. It yeah. was yeah, 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 it was absolutely but nuts. I, yeah, I watched it with my sister who has never seen wrestling before. No, I was visiting my parents for the first time a year and a half since COVID, and we were up really late. Me and my sister watching it, and that uh, Lucha Bros versus Young Bucks oh, match, wow. I think, made my sister a wrestling fan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from, wow. from never having seen it, I, I was just, I'm really tired. I'm gonna go. I was like, this, just watch this one. Yeah, and then when he jumps off the the camera, she was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely wonderful such a wonderful thing to see like i was like that that is your punk undertaker <laughs> that is the that mm. is and yours is way better than mine but that was like that moment of it was nice to see that sort of reflected mm-hmm. in sort of like how i used to feel, like how i used to feel like wrestling and how AEW made me feel i kind of i dropped off a bit in the pandemic era because without an audience i sort of lost it a bit yeah i dipped in now i like jericho fighting a drone that was my favorite part of the whole <laughs> pandemic era <laughs> 
Um, I, I like cinematic matches. I'm going to say I really enjoy a good cinematic match as if well. It's, if it's well like done, it. yeah, it's great. It's really good. Yeah, it's it's, really good. I can't remember who they're against. It was Sting and Darby Allen in that warehouse. Team Taz, it yeah, Brian Team Cage Taz, and Ricky yeah. Starks, right? Mm-hmm. That yeah. was a that I love the look of that match. That was so beautifully did, done. Dan, did you ever see the Firefly Funhouse match between Bray Wyatt and John Cena? John Cena, yes, I enjoyed that one. It as was well. great. I like that one. That was awesome. Beautiful. Very weird. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, where's that? Like occasionally, you're right. WWE hit, mm-hmm. and they when they hit, they hit hard because they've got a shit ton of talented people there waiting, just there waiting. That's all. They're just there. They just need to take them and do anything with them. It's funny, cause, yeah, because, like, I look now, and, like, Raw has actually been, like, knock on wood, it's been pretty decent lately. Like, last night's Raw was was not bad. Um, yeah, but... Pr- wait, you, you don't think so, decent. Larson? You're making a face. You've got pretty like decent versus well, last Brian week and Omega. Like Brian and Omega, pretty decent. Like, it's such a, a yeah. dearth at this moment. It's, yeah. such, a, it's such a big gap. Yeah. And th- next week, we've got... um. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow? What day is of the week? Is it? Who knows? Yeah, tomorrow. Today tomorrow's is Wednesday. Tuesday. Yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. Tomorrow. We've got that ladder match, mm-hmm. which yeah. is just set up to be insane. And that is televi- that's televised. They're mm-hmm. televising yeah, yeah, yeah. that caliber of matches because yeah. they can. And like, there's been no rematches. That's the thing that I really find interesting is the lack of... I, I don't mm-hmm. watch a match going, I've seen this a thousand times. Mm-hmm. Like it never feels like it's always fresh and always interesting, and they're doing just such a good job. And I just feel like when you see those little bits of that fans have filmed of like Tony Khan, Tony Khan, I feel like is he loves wrestling mm-hmm. and he loves what he's doing. When was the last time you felt like Vince really was proud of what he did? The Braun Breaker, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah naming Braun Breaker, yeah. I think I think it was when he and when he was handed the the Saudi check. <laughs> yeah, ex- what, yeah, exactly. Was last time Vince was like, oh, yeah. "Holy shit, I'm brilliant." Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time he cared about the actual product on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's hard. That's why to I've shifted off. It's kind of. This feels weird going back. This feels like you know, it's like you can join me. You don't have to. You can change it to going in dynamite. It's. <laughs> it's too late for that now. It's too late for that now. Yeah. I know. I've Prince, thought about like all sorts of different now. ways we could change it, but it's like ah, it's what we are. It's who we are. We lean into it. Um, it's a good title. I like the title. But yeah, no, it is it is funny. It's funny because you mentioned the the Tony Khan being a fan. Like I didn't realize until like I don't know a couple months ago. But like we went to the uh, a New Japan show in like 2017, I think, in Long Beach, and uh, and then we find out that he was there front row with a Bullet Club shirt on, just as a fan, just like enjoying the show. And then he's like, you know, it's all percolating, I guess, in his mind. Like, oh, I can, you know, I got, I have, I have a ton of money, I can make this. <laughs> and it's the thing that's probably most interesting about AEW is that like. For the first time, we're really under for the first time in twenty years, and even like with WCW, like WCW was obsessed with like just beating WWE or WWF at the time, yeah, as mm-hmm. opposed to just doing their own thing. And <clears throat> AEW is the first time that we're kind of seeing pro wrestling without Vince McMahon, like in a yeah. very long time, and it's like it, like North American style you know, on cable TV weekly with the sort of standard wrestling format. We haven't seen that. We literally have not seen pro wrestling in North America like this with a budget behind it on cable TV without Vince McMahon. And it's like a lot of people, I think they just, they look at WWF and like, well, this is as good as it can get because like, why else? You know, it's, it's the number one company. This is all we've known. This is as good as it gets. And it's like, well, no, it can be a lot different. It could be something Mm -hmm. else, something that's, not as cynical, the, I think, the, as WWE. It, it's the it gets better of the wrestling world. Mm, yeah, that's what AEW is. Yeah, it just it's and it's. I mean, what it's really done for me is because they've kicked open the forbidden door, as I've used before, and just mm-hmm. just proving I know the terminology. <laughs> and seeing all these new wrestlers coming, and I'm actually seeing New Japan stuff for the first time because I've never really watched it. I'm seeing these guys from oh. New Japan and all of these like uh, incredible wrestlers and stuff, and mo- most of them just get the shit kicked out and by John Moxley. But that's what I want to see. You know, mm. I want to see. I mean, I didn't know, like, I um, I can't remember his name. Was it Suzuki? Murder Grandpa? Something mm-hmm. yeah. like that? Yeah, Minoru Suzuki, yeah. 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 He came down the thing. I was like, I don't know who that is. And John Moxley, they cut to him and he goes, oh, fuck. And I'm like, oh, I know who that guy is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just so kind of terrified John Moxley. Okay, I'm in. I'm into this. Let's watch this yes. happen. Yes. This that's one of the, that's, that was yeah. one of the best things when I first started watching New Japan in 2017. It was like their biggest show of the year. It had some buzz behind it. And I was like, oh, let me check this out. Like, this might be interesting. And so, like, I stayed up late and watched it and was live tweeting it. 
And like, that was the, the, the great thing that my favorite thing about wrestling is just finding new stuff. And so yeah. like when you have, they had like, they had a rumble to start things off and it was like, you know, somebody I didn't know, somebody I didn't know. I'm like, wait a second. I remember that guy from WCW 20 years ago. And then like Billy Gunn would come out like a bunch of random, like, you know, <laughs> uh, wrestlers that I did know that like aren't in WWE, but they were, you, they used to be. And so like, it was a great introduction and I love rumbles anyways. And then it was like, but then every match I kept on thinking to myself, ah, I'm going to go to bed soon. But then every match and all of a sudden it was like three o'clock in the morning and it was done. But like every match just brought something new and interesting. And I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. And I feel like that's what AEW is doing. It's like they bring it's in also- all sorts of different names from like the independent ranks who bring something new yeah. to the product. And NXT did that for a while, but. Now they have Braun Brick. It's it's also nice to know that you had the experience of a UK wrestling fan staying up till three in the morning. Yes. Rampage starts at three in the morning. That sucks. Oof. That sucks. Rampage starts. I don't step for I step for Dynamite. I watch Dynamite one a.m. till three a.m. Oof. Every Wednesday. That's it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. About it. Well, I mean, that's so the Dan, cool thing gotta, about what we do. We, we get to do that. Like especially if you don't. I mean, you have furry children, but not like children. Children. So like staying up late like that. Look at that! Look at that yeah. arm just hanging off the chair. That's I know. Great. So comfy. <laughs> so comfy. Uh, Dan, uh, have you ever uh, witnessed a triple mania before? And if what's not, a triple, what's a triple mania? So triple A is a lucha libre promotion, and they have oh, their yeah, annual yeah, triple mania event. It's like their WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and we don't really follow triple A the promotion on a regular basis. We may watch two or three shows, but it's like at once a year you get that experience of like it's something completely new completely unexpected because you never know what's going to happen at these shows. It could be someone falling from 30 feet in the air into the ring. Uh, it could be <laughs> someone dressed up as an undead mariachi just like sitting uncomfortably the whole time because you can tell his feet hurt because his shoes are uncomfortable. It's all these little details <laughs> and all these little characters that make the show so fascinating and since we're kind of willf- willfully unaware of what happens the rest of the year, we go into those shows and it's, it's like our eyes are opening for the first time. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So if you get a chance, watch Triple Mania. If you want to stay oh, up, yeah. watch it with us sometime. I think that'd be fantastic. I'd love Raider Rams. Those are like the two shows that we watch. You on have from Raider now Raider. until, uh, what is it, August? August. August. Yeah. To, That's quite far away. To prepare for it. <laughs> and prepare, like, like you mean, do nothing. Yeah, basically. Two years yeah. in a row, exactly. Two years in a row, they've had a, a Marvel-themed tag match. So you got, <laughs> was it two teams of four? Mm-hmm. Or three. Two teams of four, I think. So it was an eight-man tag match. And so you got you got your Marvel heroes and your Marvel villains. And part of the fun is like, all right, which wrestlers are dressed as which heroes and which villains? Like last <laughs> year, Brian Cage was Thanos. Theo Rush was Spider-Man. This year, uh, was do we ever determine if Brian Cage was Thanos again this year? Yeah, I think he was. So. Yeah, yeah he it was, was Brian okay. Cage again. Yeah. All right. It's tons of fun. So much fun! Yeah, it's the best show of the year. Wrestling should be fun. You yeah. shouldn't you shouldn't watch a wrestling show and go. I think the guy who made this hates me. That's, <laughs> yeah. not, that's not the vibe yeah. you want to have from a yeah. show. You should have the vibe of that was a, a damn good exactly. waste of my time. <laughs> and that's what I think. I mean, and speaking of the Marvel thing, I mean that's what um that's what this like all these people coming from different places feels like. It feels like mm-hmm. it's starting to connect. Mm-hmm, yeah, and wrestling starting to swap over and change because WWE is this such a nice late thing they can't even go on fucking Twitch anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they stopped Not letting wrestlers do that. On. And it's like the, I think it was I think it was um, for I can't remember if it was Adam Cole, Daniel Bryan, but that when they were saying uh, WWE was trying to get them back, it was like it was you, Cole, you can go yeah. to New Japan, but to do that oh, we will Daniel get Bryan, exclusive. Yeah. The only person in America you can talk to is us. Mm-hmm, yeah, in New Japan. Yeah, and like that's the problem. You're just trying to close this system, and yeah. if you opened it, it would just be better for everybody yeah well it's funny because you mentioned earlier that wwe's they're not trying to like they're not budging at all and it's funny because they're not budging but you can tell lately they've been trying to emphasize what they do well which is just big they just put yeah. money into stuff and so or or like because they basically like you know said hey we're not going to go after independent wrestlers anymore so if you're an independent wrestler maybe don't and instead, like, you know, drop everything and then try out with us. And maybe we'll, you know, mm-hmm. sign your developmental contract. Which at this point, if you do that, you might be on TV in six months, whether or not you can put together a match. It's entirely possible. Um, it's entirely possible. Yeah. And so, uh, but like, you know, they go after spec. So like, you know, they signed Gable Stevenson, the gold medalist over here. And they like literally built 
or they're building like his own performance center while he finishes college. And like he was drafted to Raw last night. And it's like he's just like a student athlete. I mean, you're, you know, he won a gold medal, so I don't want to play him down. Yeah. But it's like they obviously not in like the thing that this TV show is about. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's not a gold medal in. Right. Yeah. In, like, in, in, in sports entertainment. In WrestleMania. Gold medal yeah. In- Wrestling, um, but like gold medal of WrestleMania. <laughs> but they're I like, bet Vince makes that for himself every yeah, year, and he just yeah. puts it on. Puts oh, it on. Ah, I got the gold. Another medal. successful show. <laughs> <laughs> One for me. But uh. like, I mean, the funny things with WWE is that, and it, it's funny because I always go to this. People are like, oh, is WWE going to change because of AEW? No, because they have so oh. many billion dollar deals. If yeah, and I'll be honest with you, if I if I had a business. And it was like bringing in billion dollar deal upon billion dollar deal. And somebody was like, oh, but this is so much cooler. I'd be like, well, cool doesn't pay the bills. Like, what do I yeah. care about that? I'm getting billion dollars. So there's, there's no like incentive for them to change. There's, no, there's zero, zero incentive for them to change. Now there's zero incentive for them to change. But it feels like the tide's turning and Brian Danielson signing. Now he's on that side, we call him that. That felt like a sea change. That was the first one. Because CM Punk basically went up on his first promo and went, fuck the WWE, they were a bunch of bastards. I'm here now, fuck them. Professional wrestling, go, yay, ice cream. That was his first promo. And basically everybody they hired was kind of like, yeah, fuck the WWE, they were dicks to me. And Brian Danielson came out and went, they were incredibly nice, this is the place to be. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think that's the sea change moment. <sighs> when we go back, when we watch the documentaries about this in 20 years, we'll go, that was the moment. Yeah, I that think was, I, I the think time. there was, I think there is something there. I just I honestly think that in in twenty years, I think I think what AEW is proving is that there's room for more one more wrestling promotions on in North mm-hmm. America, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. because I don't see them being a threat to WWE anytime soon. Because um, WWE mean, has they are, in what way though? In what way? In what way? Because in, okay, I'll, well, let, let me just I'll preface it by saying this. You said Daniel Bryan, Bryan, Bryan Daniel, and I'm just I'm playing sort of devil's advocate, but also like kind of not. Brian <laughs> Danielson for me absolutely is a, is, a, is a game changer. For me, it's like yeah. oh, I will tune into whatever he's doing. Adam Cole is my favorite wrestler today. I'll tune into anything he does. <clears throat> Those are huge for me. But Rampage on a Friday night does like a quarter of the rating number that SmackDown does. And so yeah. it's like, <clears throat> it, does W would WWE view that as a threat? Would WWE look at that and say, "Oh, we're worried"? I don't think no, they but I, would. I don't think. I think Rampage doesn't quite know what show it wants to be yet, and that it is, wants to be WCW Thunder is what it wants to be, evidently. It, it, well, because at the moment it, it's sort of it's awful. just it's it's just it's just the show that's it's got a couple of good matches in it and stuff, but it's it's after SmackDown, isn't it? SmackDown finishes mm-hmm. and then it's them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And it's so it's in a much worse time slot. It's a terrible Smackdown. time slot. It's an awful <clears throat> time yeah. slot. Yeah. It's in it's in beyond the Friday night death slot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From what I know about American television, there's the Friday night death slot, and then there's Rampage yeah, beyond, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. behind yeah, yeah. a rock. Yeah. And you're like, well, that, that's not the best place. I don't know why it's there, but it's there. Um, but it, it it depends on like so I was a wrestling fan. I got I bought a, I bought a Blu-ray of my favorite one because I got rid of the network and I was like, that's the one I want to keep. But I left and I've gone on to this new one now and I've I've bought the t-shirt. I'm gonna if the show comes here, I'm gonna see the show. And I've shifted over and the winds like you'll see fans start to shift and you'll see that sort of thing start to shift. And I've seen this a thousand times in the gaming industry. You see Roller Coaster Tycoon, ah, we're making loads of money, we'll just keep bashing the shit out. And then Planet Coaster comes along, and then Parkitect comes along, and sort of, where's Rokos Toku now? It's, it's cheap mobile tat. And it's dead. It's, it's a dead thing. And look at SimCity. SimCity was the pinnacle, the absolute pinnacle of city management. City Skylines gutted that thing. Because it went, we're going to do what you do, but you, we're not going to have the big budget, we're not going to have all that sort of stuff. We're going to do the little fiddly bits that the people want, and the people kind of shift over. And I think, you'll, I think WWE is going to slowly shift towards being a kid's show. I think that's going to be a thing, but I, I, because it kind of is. I mean, Finn flopping around like that fish was a beautiful moment. <laughs> but I, and I don't, I think that's the market they're going to go for. I think they're going to fill their arenas with kids, and I think they're going to follow the money that way. And if they can get a deal with Disney or something, I think that's the way they'll go. If I was running WWE, that's what I'd be heading for. 
I'd be heading for making it the Disney wrestling show. Because that's where I think it's going. Because it's not going to compete. It's not trying to compete. It's, you're right. It's trying to be its own thing. And it's making the billions and billions of dollars. But it's making the billions and billions of dollars because parents are taking their kids to these shows. Yeah. I mean, you see the audience of a WWE show. It, it's a lot of kids. And you see. Yeah. You know, yeah. See I mean, they, they went through a whole decade of. of I mean, I'm, I think they're still literally PG. I don't know what rating they get these days. But they called it the PG era, era. But they had they've yeah. been letting people say shit lately yeah they had, seth Rollins said shit oops. last night on raw oh he did he say shit old. i missed that <laughs> yeah he did in his interview it was pretty funny yeah oh i didn't see that i saw the interview just, i didn't hear him say shit just just want to point out that all the avengers films are now it seems like shit is deteriorating i literally did a video on this very recently just out of the blue shit is deteriorating is a swear word for me it, it used to be very top tier yeah i always thought but it's back to the future's got it now the avengers are saying it in all their little shows and stuff that the kids watch it's kind of it's becoming the word you're allowed to say. Yeah, it's weird. Anyway. It used to be second only to fuck. I thought shit was yeah, like, wow. Enough. It was like shit. And then like kind of on par, like a little bit lower down was asshole. I always thought yeah. asshole was a really fucked up thing to say. Or you could say asshole, but you had to beep out the hole. <laughs> oh, okay. So you could say ass, but you couldn't say asshole. Yeah. yeah. But now like another, I guess another forbidden door, AEW broke it down to saying shit and wrestling because they started that. They say like shit lot. all over the place. And now... WB has to catch up. It's on yeah. NXT 2.0. Yeah. Now they said it on Raw. They said it like three times oh. or four times on 2.0. It's been said quite a few times. Because that's the thing, yeah, that, that's the rumor right now is that USA they and WWE want 2.0 to be edgier. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Why, why did they set it up like a child's crash then? Yeah. I don't <laughs> it know. bright colors. It, it looks like a Nickelodeon show, but it's going to be like Yeah, it does. I know. Yeah. It does. Has anyone like... been slimed on it yet? Uh, Not that, yet. that we made that joke endlessly on the first one. I was like, "Oh my god, somebody's gonna get slimed in this episode." Hasn't happened yet. But no, instead, yet. Braun Breaker just said, "You want a friend? Get a dog. I'm not taking your shit." Whoa! Yeah. Oh, he'll give a take shit. the shit of it. He bagged the shit of a dog up. I assume he's not yeah. like a litter. I'm, I'm gonna put a shit on your doorstep. <laughs> You're gonna step in it. You gotta light it. Otherwise, there's no reason for them to step. Kind of great if that was his gimmick, prankster. He's prankster. <laughs> just yeah. A, yeah. Just, a, just Dennis the Menace. Yeah. I think my point about it being quite childish is coming back in. <laughs> I cut his brakes on his car. It's like, whoa, that's not a prank. <laughs> Attempted murder. That's really a dangerous. wild card move. That's what that is. I went too far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. WrestleMania's a 15. Holy crap. Look at the stuff that we used to get away with. Whoa, 15? Oh, wow. Whoa. 15. Um, no, wow. I, I, I think we're at the, the point where, I mean, they've got all these massive TV deals, but I don't think TV's long for this world to be perfectly honest it's kind of a dying thing we're all moving on to the streaming so i i don't know it depends where they want to take wwe because i don't think i think for people like us i think eventually what's going in raw fight where do you see yourself in five years i don't think you'll be covering wwe at all see it becoming at all? at all i think it, i think uh, i've gone blurry this is no i'm fading away no oh my gosh <laughs> No. Find me camera. Vince it's just is, Vince is in control of the dog, Discord right? here. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's like, well, I think with is so long as it's like synonymous with with professional wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it, as long as it's the Kleenex, you know, the name brand. Yeah, we're gonna kind of be in a position where we have to cover it because that's gonna be the stuff that most people are gonna be watching. Yeah, now but that, we've already seen brand shift. Sim City used to Obviously. be the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. games, no, games is such a different thing because like. Yeah, how many game developers like are fluid. there on the planet? Like you can, I can sit here and learn how to make a game and make it like I'll make a, a Flappy Bird or whatever that thing was called, and then that'll <laughs> replace Temple Run or whatever was before that. Like with wrestling, nobody has ever really been able to do it because it's such a weird thing. Advertisers of traditionally undervalued wrestling content. Um, it's it's a I I honestly think that it's just going to be AEW is going to occupy a different space. In entertainment as WWE, I think it's going to be. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, I think. I think they're going to they're going to take out the pro wrestling fans slowly, and they're going to absorb the pro wrestling fans. Yeah, I was going to say. I I think that would be. We're going to like. I would imagine their audience is going to be, as you mentioned, families, and then according to their demos, older people. That's what WWE's like main Gold demo Gold. has been for a while is people like forty nine plus, and I think AEW, I think the the demo numbers bear this out already, is is really going to appeal to the same audience, kind of like the Attitude Era did, 
which is, you know, people in college, essentially. If you look at the yeah. crowd in AEW show, it looks like, say, for the, the massive amount of signs out there, it looks a lot like an attitude era crowd. A lot of people in their, tw- their, in their, in their 20s, maybe early 30s. Yeah. Um, and it seems like from a demographic uh, situation, that's going to be where AEW, and I think, like I said, I think that bears out in numbers, where AEW is strongest. Now, if, it's, if that's a trend that's going to continue, where, you know, people in that 18 to 49 demo are going to gravitate towards AEW, families, and then older people are going to gravitate towards WB. Now, like in terms of the long-term building potential, in terms of stabilizing and building an audience, is it going to be a situation where AEW fans, once they reach a certain age, we're like, all right, I want a different kind of wrestling in my life. I'll go to WB. Or are they going to stick with AEW the entire time? That's something that's, you know, probably 5, 10, 15 years in the future. Who knows? And I think on top um, of that, I, I think WWE's, I think there's a good chance WWE sells in 2024 anyways. When they start, yeah, when they chance. start negotiating the, because you, you just said it, not sure the world is long for TV, although still like 70% of people get their shit from TV. TV is not long for this world. Not the world's long for TV. That implies that the, the world will not outlive TV. Right. Yeah. The There's other one. Yeah. Big TV and the other whatever, whatever smart thing is you said, TV's not going to be around <laughs> very long. Uh, fucking making me feel stupid, Dan. Thank you. Uh, no, I, I th- you, you watched the Finn match by choice. Like, <laughs> well, I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, but how? How do you not know something like that's going to happen now? You should have. Well, how you know, you it's know? like Char- you should know. It's like Charlie Brown and Lucy, man. It's like Charlie yeah, Brown. Yeah, that's what yeah, it is. Totally. You yeah. never. They never want to give you what you want. I mean, they had Daniel Bryan was what was he? B plus player, and they was like, he's the B plus guy, and they gave him B plus people a face, and they gave him B plusness and B plusness, and when he left there, he was like B plus, and he's in AEW for what one two matches, and he's up there top to to fucking Super Saiyan A star. Yeah, but like he did. He did he main be. event WrestleMania this year. Did he? Yeah. That mm-hmm. he did a little side look. What was what was the match? It was him it versus was Roman, Roman and, Edge, and Roman Reigns stacked him in Edge. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel Bryan was the bottom stack. He got stacked. <laughs> hey, like you're wrong true... on Roman. Roman these days is really entertaining, dude. Roman is very entertaining these days. If you like smarmy pricks, that's the problem. Who I doesn't? Don't. I, I... Are you kidding me? Do you watch Succession? Oh, no. Oh, you it. should. Oh, God, Great it's show. so good. It's on HBO over here. I don't know where it would be for you guys. Do you guys have HBO Max? What? No, we fucking don't. And I'm desperate for it. I've got Why not? Good stuff on there. Just get expressvpn.com. Expressvpn slash doc, expressvpn.com slash G-I-R. Yeah. We got advertisers now, Dan. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I got rid of them. I got my book, Fuck Yeah, Video Games. Yeah, you're writing books. Who needs video games when you're writing or, uh, you know sponsors when books? you're writing books? Why? Hey, books are nothing. What? Are yeah, but nothing. you sell a lot of them. Yeah, still nothing. Oh you got to sell goodness. a lot of books. Oh, you really? got to stop calling them things like Fuck Yeah, Video Games and the Paradox Paradox. That ain't going to sell. No one's gonna want now, if you write another book now that you've had a successful book, then you can uh, make more mo- money on next book if, if it's successful. Yeah, hey, you're in a movie. I was in a movie, Ashens and the Plibbies Heist, available yeah. now in somewhere, I don't know, See? lots of places you can watch it. See? I'm an action figure. Yeah. They made action figures about the, the Plibbies Heist. I'm an action figure. I know. I was going to buy one the other day, and then I was like, I'll wait till I get paid. Oh, they're gone now. You, there's a very small window when we can make them. It's like the most limited run. How many did you get? Me. And can I have one of yours that you just got? Did you get any uh, comps? I don't know. How many. I've got none yet. None? They didn't send you like a whole box of them to give out to your I friends? Get like a whole, that, was, that was literally how much I got paid for them. Was I was, I was like, I'll have a box. Yeah. <laughs> you can box have the rights figures. to my face as yeah. long as I get tiny means to play with. As long as like, yeah, I get a bunch of them to play with. Um, <laughs> no, I was going to say something for how it was. That's okay. Probably something to do with the WWE. Yeah, maybe. But that's the thing. I mean, yeah, so he went from being the bottom of a edge sandwich. Yeah. No, I mm-hmm. love it. I love it. I think it's, I think it's awesome. I think it's great. Um... At a certain point, I don't know. It's going to be in in five years. I think the WWE. Oh, that's what I was going to. That was what I was talking about. We're talking about TV. Yeah, I think that the WWE has been chasing five year deal after <clears throat> five year deal for a long time, and they probably have to know that those billion dollar deals for live TV events might not be around forever. Yeah, they're gone. And so I think that they're going to build themselves like, up awesome. as, hey, we're this huge thing. Oh, and uh, and and they're, they're wouldn't shock me. I'll put it this way. It wouldn't shock me if they were doing what they're doing right now to make because they're really leaning up the company a bit. 
Like yeah. they're yeah. they're releasing a, a ton of wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I saw like a hundred and what was it? How it many hundred? It was a mass. Like it was a lot or something like that. Between yeah, and then a bunch of employees and stuff, people that work. You yeah, know, yeah. Various departments. So it wouldn't shock me if they, they sold. Off. If instead of getting another TV deal, they just outright sold because I don't know that they're especially with a. I mean, a AEW might be a game changer in that it might hasten a sale of the WWE because the McMahons might be yeah. like, oh shit, we used to not have competition and now we're going to have AEW out there, you know, basically doing similar numbers. Like in three years, their viewership probably will be on par with WWE and uh, like the overall viewership number. The demo is already basically where Raw's at. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, so that's they'll, the they'll, thing that advertisers care about. Is yeah. That's the, it's yeah, that group yeah. we can sell yeah. stuff to. And so the stuff because if WWE starts skewing for families, you've got to get family friendly advertising. And do you want family friendly advertising on a show where people are hitting each other with yeah, right. chairs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I they'll probably it would not shock me if they try to put together the company as like a sale at that point. In which mm-hmm. case, it's mm-hmm. it's a whole new game because who knows you know who who's going to be running it, who's going to be overseeing it. I mean, it could continue to be absolute shit, but it's not going to be at that point. It potentially wouldn't be at the whims of Vince McMahon, which I think is a lot of the problem. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, he just does shit just randomly. It'll just be like, oh, well, this will, th-, you know, oh, you're on a trajectory for like a decent story here. And then it's just like, no, we're going to do this instead. And it's like, what the yeah. fuck? Or there's a, there's, <laughs> there's a good story laid out in front of them. They could tell like in their sleep. Mm-hmm. No, we're not going to do that. Yeah. We're we have this one that. moment and call it the story. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get rid of Adam Cole. Why did they get rid of Adam Cole? Why would you leave? They wouldn't, they you? wouldn't let him, cut his hair. they wouldn't let him do his Twitch channel. He, He's he, Adam Cole. I, because I, I, you know, I, I didn't see a huge amount of Adam Cole, and he went, he did Adam Cole, baby. I knew that bit, and the the volume of that crowd. My response to hit that volume of crowd was, "Oh, Vince is a fucking idiot." Yeah. Oh no, he's easily that. easily he's the most popular wrestler wherever he goes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they weren't like, okay, we're gonna put you on main roster, and basically, like number, like I don't know, pandemic, I think fucked up a lot of stuff, obviously for a lot of people, but like. Mm-hmm. I think that like with him, it wasn't, it, they, they really should have been like, Oh, you want to do Twitch? Okay. What do we care? Uh, uh, what do you, what do you want to do on main roster? Like where, where do you want to see yourself in two years on main roster? Let's chart that roadmap and then, you know, yeah. contractually stick to it. And they didn't do that because they're WWE and they're like, Oh, we'd rather, you know, focus on getting a uh, Gable Stevenson than a surefire commodity that we have right now available to us yeah. in this moment. That is incredibly popular. popular. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, they want him to cut his hair and change his name. Yeah. They want him to change his name. Yeah, because, yeah, because the, Michael Cole's the announcer is Michael Cole, and we can't tell the difference because they have the same name. You might because get the show is aimed at related. children. Ch- yes, that's what we're... <laughs> it looks like, for a second, I'm sleeping, was like, <laughs> I'm reviewing a show for children. I don't know. I'd say, I kind of I kind of disagree that they're aiming it towards children. Like, I think that they want to do that to a degree... I don't know that I honestly don't know that they really understand. I would be curious to know like what the current president of the company, Nick Khan, like what he wants to go after. It'd be weird. Sorry, if they there's two just Khans. I'm confused. Could we change his name? Yeah, be... I know. It's very confusing. <laughs> it's very confusing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. I, you know, I, I think, know. I think WWE, uh, WWE raw, a Disney plus original isn't too far off. It's possible. Um, That's possible. It's I think possible. it gets more interesting if you get rid of Vince, because just having that one guy tell his story over and over and over and over again. Oh, I can I can be really wanky here, actually. A bit of advice that I was given by Stephen Moffat, the head writer of Doctor Who. Can I mm. went to his house. That's a thing, because my life is mad. A bit of advice he gave me. He says there's like three stages of a career. There's the there's the start of it where it's all new and exciting, and you're trying new stuff, and some of it works and some of it doesn't, and that's really fun. And you've got like this middle bit, and that's the bit where you've got into this rhythm, you've got into this ride and you're still trying these new things, but you know what new things are going to work. And that's, you know, it's a really, that's the solid time. Mm. And then there's a bit where it gets easy and you get cocky with it. And that's the time you should leave a show. And that's why he was leaving yeah. uh, Doctor Who. Uh, mm-hmm. Vince is on stage 12. Yeah. Which is, yeah. You, you're trying your desperate to just run the show into the ground and yet still making billions. Yeah. And you're not entirely sure why. Yeah. But I feeling mean, validated by it all. That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. He's making yeah. billions of dollars yeah. and he's he's validated by it creatively. And because that's what he cares about. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, financially, I'd say he's, 
it's I don't think he cares about the creative side of it at, at all. I mean, the case could be made that the billion dollars are coming off of like what he's done over the past 25 years or 30 years, as opposed to yeah. what they're doing right now. Their legacy yeah. billions. Yeah. 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 Because it has been undervalued for years. Yeah, yeah I, I got 2.5 million subscribers. I only get like 30k video, views yeah, video right. now. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, I'm like, yeah, 2.5 million subscribers. I'll sell myself as that. Mm -hmm. They're not there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've all gone, but I'll pretend. Yeah, it's fine. Any YouTuber like that that ever had experience or ever had success like five years ago is like in the same spot, basically. Yeah, I had to. I just bail and I got too popular. It was terrifying. I, I did not like so, the level yeah. of popularity. Yeah, I was like, um, no, I want to be quieter. Mm -hmm. I gotta go. How do I do that? Oh, I'm gonna scare people away with weird stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I like to do. I have to go and get stuff. Get weird. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I I just go go into yeah, sort of five years. I don't even yeah. WWE I think is gonna be owned by someone else. Probably if they sell it. Maybe if they're it. And if there's no Vince, I think it becomes a fresh ball game. But as long as Vince is clutching onto it, I think they're gonna lose that demo. If you lose that demo, you lose the advertisers. That money's gonna start to fall. And then, then that's the really interesting bit. It would be very interesting to see what they did with like, I'm not going to say necessarily traditional, but like some sort of, some sort of type of like creative structure more akin to TV where you have like showrunners come in and then yeah. like they, they tackle a couple seasons and then you have a new showrunner come in and you can sort of point to different areas, which like you can kind of look back in WWE when, you know, like different head writers were in charge. But at the end of the day, it was always like Vince you know, sort of green lighting well, stuff okay. and let it, it always went through his yeah, yeah. final filter. So it's, it's yeah. always been Vince, but like, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see like what happens if they bring in, you know, uh, different, like Jimmy Jacobs one year or even like, you know, 15 years from now, Kevin Owens took over for like, you know, five yeah. years or something. Bring Werner <laughs> Herzog in to do the WrestleMania. There you go. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see, I'd like to see WWE without Vince, but while he's still there, I got no interest. I got no interest in watching another, you know, Big E gets squashed by Goldberg in five seconds yeah. and one spear. The funny you, thing is, like, we go... saw, like, the Brock Kofi thing we saw coming. It was always like, yeah. okay, what's the worst case scenario? It was SmackDown as well, didn't it? Yeah, it was the first SmackDown Ooh. that they brought to uh, yep. to, to Fox. Like Fox, yeah. And it was, uh, it was, I remember, I remember thinking at the time, like, okay, <laughs> what's the worst possible outcome that is likely, that is pot, that is totally possible? What's the worst one? And it's like, he gets squashed by Brock. Yeah, and then and then it, it totally happened. It was like, oh, okay. It was yeah. all for a, a match against Cain Velasquez. It lasted two and a half minutes. Yeah, a guy who came into the company with shot knees. <laughs> yep, yep. So yeah, yep. but then they have cool stuff happen too. <laughs> like, uh, I I'm enjoying a lot of it right now. Burn to be honest with you, apart. like it's it's you can talk shit about the creative and it and it's totally valid. But like the the players involved, the actual wrestlers go out there and they perform their damnedest and they, and every week yeah. and at least one of the shows, you have a killer match of some sort. Um, and, uh, and so there is, there is stuff to appreciate. Like I, I really enjoy Becky's character work right now. Um, I enjoy the hell out of Charlotte right now. Um, Seth Rollins is doing the Seth best. Seth Rollins is doing right the career work right now. He's really terrific. Yeah. Um, and I just, I enjoy watching, I enjoy watching like, Big E be a champion. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I could I could I could go on and on. And it's not it's like, yeah, there are no compelling stories. But like in WWE's history, let's be frank. The compelling stories are really few and far between. Daniel. I mean, for... Yeah. Daniel Bryan is a really <laughs> Daniel Bryan's a good one. But the funny thing about Daniel Bryan is that like that was a story that they started to tell that they quit on and the fans yep. revived it. The fans like yeah, yeah. Br brought him to that WrestleMania 30 main event, but they had been yeah. telling his story for like eight months. And then they're like, yeah, now we're going to go Batista. And the fans are like, mm -mm, no, 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 no. You're going to see this yeah, through. It's got, it's got this movie coming out because yeah. money, it's, it's all about money. Yeah. They'll throw anything away, however good it is for money. Yeah. And that's the thing. You get, I mean, that was, I mean, I, it, it, that Daniel Bryan was my first year of watching wrestling. That story, mm -hmm. my first year of watching wrestling ended with Daniel Bryan becoming champion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, which, which skewed me, I think, a little bit. I think for, for coming in like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I came in, I was like, oh, you can have these kind of stories. And then we just never had anything like that again. Well, it's it like no... it's like what brought us back to wrestling was CM Punk's pipe bomb. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, he had yeah. his match. You know, the, the, all the stuff with Cena was great. 
It's like he, he went to Money in the Bank, he won the title, and he was like, okay, I'm leaving. And we had in our heads, okay, what if he were to leave with the title and go to, like, you know, WWE-friendly smaller promotions? Like, I don't know, he shows up, well, he shows up, let's say, in Ring of Honor, or he shows up, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. Like at a PWG show or something like that. Yeah, Like yeah. a small high school, you know, show. What if WWE even manufactured one of these? Like WWE puts on sort of as like, you know, on the sly, like a high school uh, 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 gymnasium well, show. Was it was Evolve around back then? Could have been like an Evolve show. Evolve, yeah, I think Evolve was around back then. So they do that. I don't they, I don't know if they were like linked necessarily with WWE back then, though. Yeah, yeah I don't think they um, were either. But like he goes and he, and he actually does that. And they have like grainy fan cam footage of that. And they air that on Raw the next week. But instead, they just brought him back. And it's like, like two yeah, weeks later, brought him back. Yeah, like yeah. the next week they had like an interim title, like Ray Mysterio won it or John Cena. Won, I forget what it was. And then like eventually, like a, a punk came back and he was like negotiating. They did some good stuff because he's just good. But yeah. like they always set up these intriguing possibilities, and then they just sort of pay it off in the lamest possible way. And you get because, by yeah. on the yeah. performers yeah. being really good. No, I think that's but the it, thing. It's it just be real. Sorry, go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. So I was just gonna say, just long term, I can't get excited about anything that happens in WWE anymore because I go. It's not gonna. It's not gonna get. It's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I think I said it on this once. Like uh, watching NXT back when it was a thing that I used to watch. It, I hated it because it was like knowing that hell was real and everybody went there when you got called up. Mm, yeah, yeah. You yeah. just yeah. you just in this yeah. worst place. It's like no, don't don't win for too long. Don't go there. You get yeah. They they give you like Kevin Owens debuting against John Cena and it was so perfect. And then you yeah. think, oh, it could be like that every time. And then it's not. It's like that's the one exceptional. Or you get like a Finn Balor. It's like, oh, it could be like that. And then it's like, no, it's all just sort of down. Neville's from there. a superhero, but not yeah. really. Yeah, and right. then, yeah. And then, totally. yeah, Tony Khan takes one look at him and goes, he's just a bit of a big bastard. All right, go out there. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Your, yeah. Your character is just, you're a bastard. Have fun with it. Off you go. So you're saying and in five years we don't have to cover WWE? You're giving us permission to stop covering WWE yes, five years I, from now? I give you permission now, I see, darlings. I, you feel free. But um, no. I think, you know, it's it's the popular one. It's the one that people go for. But I think, you know, I've seen, you know, I've seen, uh, we've, we've seen Batman films and Superman films get absolutely obliterated by Marvel. And DC's mm -hmm. kind of become a nothing laughing stock. Yeah. And how many, you know, Chris Nolan, Chris Nolan, Chris Nolan, boom, the MCU just comes in there and just lands it. And they can't, they can barely get a break these days. I mean, most recent Suicide, Suicide Squad was pretty good, I heard. Mm -hmm, yeah. But yeah. like, since then, they've just floundered and struggled and stuff. They don't really, they try to do their own Avengers and fucked it. And, you know, it's just sort of big giants, you know, roam in there forever. It, it's crazy. It yeah. Flat. And it's like, it, it's funny with DC because it's like. You had, like, look, regardless of, of what you felt about, like, the Snyder Cut of Justice League, it captured the zeitgeist in the moment. Like, it did have a lot of people who were like, oh, man, this is cool. This validated what we wanted for all this time. You know, whether or not you like it, there is a giant mass of fans who are like, wow, this is really cool. And then they're like, mm, we don't like working with this guy. We don't want to do that anymore. We're going to do it our way, which is – and now, dude, now even the comic books – uh, there was, I, I don't know if this was like a substantiated rumor or not, but the comic books are going to shift over to the DC movie model where they're not, they're, they're, they're basically going to tell mini series. They're, they're going to be publishing mini series that are not in the same contained universe, which is fucking nuts. And like really contrary to like everything they've ever done. Like they, they've rebooted so many times. Now they're just like, Hey, you know what? When we decide we have like, uh, I don't know, a Grant Morrison who has a Batman story. We're just going to go ahead and tell that story. And that'll be the Batman book for that period of time. And yeah. it'll have nothing to do with any larger universe that's going on right now, which I don't know if they're actually going to pull the trigger. But like they've done that. They've had really high profile sort of one shot or miniseries books lately. And it wouldn't shock me if they just went all in on that model. Where it's like, hey, yeah. we've got this story with Superman we want to tell. We're just going to tell this. It's not going to have ramifications in the rest of the DC universe. Whereas before it was like, oh, this Superman right here is in the same universe as this Flash over here. And if they meet yeah. in this comic, it's it's like the same guy. They can reference that yeah. moment, that history. And now they're just going to be like, because that's what they're doing with the DC movies. Is like, we're just going to tell our stories with like certain actors that might have played the characters before, but maybe not. And then we're going to have Flashpoint. And that's going to be sort of our way of saying, hey, it's all connected, 
but they're all in their own universes, so not really. Yeah. So. Which is better for storytelling. I mean, it's impenetrable to get in the comics these days. Oh, it's. I tried. I have. I tried. Yeah. Desperately, I tried to listen because I like Mars Morales, and I was like, I want to, I want more Mars Morales, and I got the Mars Morales omnibus, and mm-hmm. I was like, omnibus means that's going to be all of it. Yeah. Page mm-hmm. one, he's already Spider Man. Okay, that's, maybe that's <laughs> just how that started. Yeah. Maybe he just immediately started as Spider Man. You get to a bit, and it's like, it's like, oh, I've got to go do this mission for this like thing. It's getting up. We might be getting Civil War too. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have some episodes of Civil War. No, just now. It's after that. And I'm like, oh, so I, there's just huge chunks missing here. And it, this is the um, omnibus of his story. I started. Like, and I, I need. I got the uh, the DC Universe Infinite app, which is basically everything, like everything in the DC Universe, at least in comic book form, for like ten dollars a month. And you get the new issue six months late, which I'm fine with. I don't need to keep up with it. Like right now, six months goes by pretty quick. And so I went back and I started reading all like just the the universe reboot series. There's like Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, Zero Hour, Infinite Crisis. And like it gets so much more convoluted. Like I'm at I'm an infinite cry. I just finished Infinite Crisis. And I'm like, this is barely readable. Like nobody who just wants to go in and read a fucking superhero comic. It's like, what is the physics involved in this shit? What is happening right now? And then that led to like the new 52 where they rebooted it and like editorial was a fucking mess and and they were bringing people back and uh, Batgirl is no longer like in a wheelchair, which had happened, you know, famously in, in, in the killing joke. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's just it's it's such a disaster. And given that they're like four bucks a pop, like per comic now, it's like. You can't like nobody who isn't massively rich can get into this and who has yeah. the time to understand what the fuck is happening even. Yeah. 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 Um, some people say the MCU is like that. And I mean, I think it is too. Yeah. On. I think I've heard that too. Yeah. But it's, ten, it's been 10 years of films and they're kind of. Oh, like, oh, the, oh, the MC. Oh, yeah. 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 The MCU, like, I mean, just watch it. You can watch a film and it'll be standalone, a great film. And then like a guy who looks like a wizard will turn up for a few scenes. Mm-hmm, yeah. Normally. And you're yeah, like, right. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wizard guy. Yeah. And He's you can, get, I think you can yeah. get through it. Yeah. But I think, yeah, 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 um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get your Avengers ones where you should have done your homework before. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, I hope you've seen Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for this scene. Otherwise, it's something. <laughs> I mean, it's but I like I think that they works. have shit that like is more rewarding, I think, to people who pay attention. Like obviously WandaVision and Loki are obviously for people who like completely yeah, pay love, attention to that shit. Love them. Those are, Loki yeah, was those terrifying. are two. Loki, Loki was, was so scary. Great. It was so great. So scary okay. to watch because it got so close to a really key point of my my um, my book I'm writing. Oh, and yeah. And it was like getting really close. I was like, no, please, please. And every episode I was like, oh, no. And then it, it misses it by miles. And I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Oh, it comes up to an, it skirts an idea and then ignores it. And I'm like, thank God you ignored it. It's not the right show to cover it, which is why I'm glad for it. Yeah. But, um, oh, that was a. Uh, that was that was quite so I'm rewatching it in a sort of relaxed I now know it's not a threat sort of thing. Yeah. I'm not gonna have all my yeah. two years of work sort of undone. But I yeah, there's there is a there was a Kiefer Sutherland T V show like fifteen years ago that came twenty four. Uh, no 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 it was I'm sorry, it was closer to ten years ago. That twenty four <laughs> that had yeah. twenty four reboot. <laughs> yeah, the twenty four reboot. No, it was a different one, and it was like the, the plot was so close to like a graphic novel that I had published uh, back in 2005, and I was like, oh, shit, what is happening right now? And then, like, I don't even know. I think, like, they had a pilot or maybe half a season, and it just, like, got canceled, so it was like, okay, yeah. well, it was nothing. But, uh, but yeah, no, that was, yeah, I like when that happens. Because it's oh, like, it was such say. an obscure graphic novel that I put out. I'm like, there's no way that they fucking copied it. It's like... <laughs> You know, it wasn't that yeah. one way. He was president, was it? Mm-hmm. Was it had to do. He had like like an autistic child that could see the future or something like that. And oh was, yeah, yeah. yeah. While being yeah. president, there was no president. I don't think there was uh, a president. I wish he was president. Well, I'm sure in that president. world there was a president. It just wasn't him. I don't think it was it featured on the story the prominently. Yeah. Ooh, big stretch. Anyways, uh, Dan, we have to go and cover Raw now. <laughs> I still have to finish <laughs> watching Raw. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, do you know? Do you know what's it live anymore? Oh God, no. Oh, okay. Oh, so there's hope for you, yeah. Yeah, yeah we no, stopped we, st- yeah, we stopped doing that. We made this big, like, or we, it wasn't even a big announcement, but it was funny. Like, oh, there was a was stretch it? when Raw was, like, completely unwatchable. Like, completely yeah. unwatchable. And we were covering it the night of. We were like, oh, yeah, we're going to watch this for three hours and then try to be entertaining for two hours. And we were like... It wasn't, we're, it wasn't healthy for us to continue doing that. We were like, this show is just terrible. Like, our, like going in Raw, the Raw re- recap was just bad because we were both <laughs> miserable. 
And I, and and we just sort of I texted Larson when I was like, yeah, we should start doing this next day. He was like, okay. And so like on our show, we were like, hey, you know, a quick side note, we're gonna be covering this twelve hours later because like we don't want to do it at night anymore. It's just not good for us. And then like uh, I just to make the announcement, I put I clipped that, I put it on Twitter. I was like, hey, we're not gonna cover Monday Night Raws on Mondays anymore. And then like it just blew up, and everybody in wrestling media was like, oh my god, the show that only covers Monday Night Raw. I was like, wait, what? No, we don't only cover Monday Night Raw. <laughs> It's not covering Raw anymore. Yeah, they they were saying we're not covering Raw anymore. I was like, no, we are. It's the next day. Like, how do you people not know we've been around forever? How do you not know who we are? <laughs> yeah. So. Now we got to be number one. I thought this was the number one wrestling podcast in the universe or something. We're I think we're like the number one fan based podcast in the United States. You Brits <laughs> love your wrestling, and so there's a couple of you guys out there that are like like cultaholic and, and what culture i think and i think or uh, yeah. uh sorry wrestle talk rather wrestle talk yeah. uh, and the new one i'm starting as of today with these two dogs uh going in dynamite where we'll we be eating snacks and watching dynamite would be great is that so Flowery. it's just it's just you sitting there watching the cameras on you yeah. eating yeah no the dogs are eating the snacks okay well i mean the, you got dogs oh, in there that's a draw yeah. people yeah, like that's a draw this is the big dog Ooh, hello oh <laughs> look at this, him this is her. 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 This is a tiny little girl, Ducky. Look, she will only kill you. What's her name? This is Lilith. <gasps> oh, Lilith. Lilith. Hello, Lilith. And that's Matilda under there being massive. And, and Matilda. Oh, they're lovely. <laughs> they're so lovely. Do another trick because you're very well behaved. All right. Well, Can Arson has to go finish watching Raw, Dan. So we have to go now. <laughs> gotta I'm gonna go, hang Dan. Out with some dogs. We should do this on a more regular dogs. basis than once every five years. Three sure. years. Three, has it been, been three? three years since we did a show together? We did that SummerSlam, uh, like, second recap with Dan a, couple, a few years back. I remember okay. that. Because yeah. I put, yeah. I put his head over big... John Cena's body. I'll, I'll watch a WWE. No, I won't. What's the next AEW one? I'll turn up for that. Full gear. Uh, Full gear. He could take my place because I'm going to be on vacation. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There we go. Done. It'll be, ooh, it'll be this. It'll be me, Dan, and the Enforcer. It'll be the both third men's. I need him to pretend to be... Larson for it though. Just, I don't that's think my he's contract. gonna do that. I think he's just gonna be <laughs> the enforcer, and it'll be like uh, I don't know. Did the Dukes of Hazard ever meet their cousins when there was contract negotiation? Did Bo and Luke ever meet Vance and Coy? Yeah, I, in the show, I don't. I'm not aware. I don't, I don't know if they did. Is this a new faction in the WWE? I don't know if it's. Oh, it's a no, show. It's, it's 80s an American show from the eighties. I, I know. I was making a, a joke. Remember jokes? Oh, okay. Remember when you were allowed fun? I didn't when, know. I didn't know if you knew what the Dukes of you. Hazard is. that kind of you know. What was the last? What was the last name of Bo and Luke? Uh, it was Jim. It was Duke. It's the Dukes of Hazard. It's the name of the show. Bye. No, Goodbye, Dan. We have to go lie. now. That was a lie. They were the gyms. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>